Okay, in this example, we're told we have a centrifugal pump tested at 2875 RPM, delivering a flow rate of 252 gallons per minute and a head rise of 138 feet. It's being tested at its best efficiency point, which gives an efficiency of 76%. We're asked to determine the specific speed of the pump, the impeller shape, and the required power input into the pump. So let's first calculate the specific speed. So the dimensional specific speed looks like the following. This is the rotational speed of the pump given in RPM multiplied by the square root of the volumetric flow rate given in gallons per minute and then divided by the head rise uh, through the pump given in feet raised to the three quarters power. It's an unusual set of units but the reason they're given in this set of units is because these are common units used at least in the English system. Our rotations per minute, gallons per minute, and feet. So we can go ahead and plug in the values here. We're given the rotational speed as uh, in, in RPM, that's this one. We're given the flow rate, that's this one, in the correct units. And then we're also given the head rise in the correct units, so that's that one. So when you plug the numbers in, you'll get that the, dim the dimensional specific speed is 1,130 RPM gallons per minute to the one-half feet to the minus three-quarters. It's an unusual set of units. You could also do this in the dimensionless form of the specific speed. The conversion between the two looks like this. It's the dimensional specific speed divided by 2,733 RPM gallons per minute to the one-half feet to the minus three-quarters. So we could plug this into here and find the dimensionless specific speed as well. And that comes out to be 0.414. So what we do with that dimensionless specific speed is it'll tell us what general class of impellers or pumps will be most efficient for our particular application. So if we go to a plot, just remember these numbers, 1130 and 0.414. So we can go to a plot showing um, the, specific, the type of pump impellers that are most efficient for a given specific speed. You'll see up here this is the dimensional specific speed. So we were at 1130, so right there. And this is the dimensionless specific speed. We calculated 0.414, which is right there. So you can see the most efficient type of pump impeller for our given application is a radial flow impeller. So that's the use of specific speed. Is It won't tell you the make or model of the pump you should use, but it'll tell you what general class of pump would be most efficient for your operation. It just helps narrow down the types of pumps you have to look through. So we would know, for example, not to bother with an axial flow or a mixed flow impeller um, type of pump. They just wouldn't be the most efficient for our application. It's really a radial flow impeller that's more efficient for us. So that's the value of the specific speed. Okay, and then this last part of the problem is to compute the required power input into the pump. By the way, we're not sketching the impeller shape. I just showed you the impeller shape from the diagram. So now let's determine the required power into the pump. So I'll start with the efficiency of the pump since that was given. The efficiency of the pump is the power that goes into the fluid divided by the power that goes into the pump. Keep in mind that all of the, all of the power that goes into the pump doesn't make it into the fluid. There's some inefficiency. So some, some power goes into uh, bearing losses. Some come into uh, fluid mechanic tip losses like flow sneaking around the impeller tip. That doesn't really contribute to the head rise in the fluid. Things like that. Those all... Um, and there's some viscous losses. All those things contribute to the losses. And that's why all of the power that goes into the pump doesn't make it into the fluid. So if I do some rearranging here, we're trying to solve for the power that goes into the pump. So this would be the power that makes it into the fluid divided by the efficiency of the pump. We know the efficiency of the pump is 76%. So that pump efficiency right here is this quantity here. Now to find the power that goes into the fluid, we can just go back to our, our um, expression for the shaft head. Remember shaft head is the power that gets into the fluid divided by the mass flow rate of the fluid through the pump times gravity. So we can just rearrange that to solve for the power that makes it into the fluid. So this is the head rise of the fluid, mass flow rate, gravity. Mass flow rate, we can relate to the volumetric flow rate by multiplying by the density. 
and we're given these quantities. So we're given that we're dealing with water, we're given the volumetric flow rate, we're given, well, we know gravitational acceleration, we're given the head rise. The head rise was the 138 feet. There's some unit conversions involved, so you'd have to work through that. I won't do those here, but with English units, you're going to have to do some unit conversions. But if you work through the numbers, you'll get that the power that makes it into the fluid is 8.8 .8 horsepower, which means the power they have to put into the pump comes out to be 11.6 horsepower. It's a little bit more because of the inefficiencies we've discussed. All right, I think that's all there is to this example, so we'll end it there.